Hi, I'm Walt, and this is Delta Astrophotography. In my last video, we photographed the Orion Nebula with the 75 to 300 millimeter kit lens. And if you want to see how we did that, you can check this video out right up here or see it in the description below. Now, today, we are going to process that image. This is going to be my full processing tutorial. The Orion Nebula can be a bit complex to process, very easy to photograph, kind of complex to process because of the core and how it gets really blown out. But I'm going to try to take this slow and just take your time, rewind when you need to, and just enjoy experimenting. Now, I normally stack with Deep Sky Stacker, and I'm going to show you how to do that, but we're also going to stack with Cyril because Cyril is a free program for Windows and Mac, so you Mac users can have a program to stack with as well. But Cyril does more than stacking. It has a lot of similar features to PixInsight. So we're going to start out in Cyril doing things like removing light pollution and color cast, gradients and vignetting, and then doing some background and color calibration before we move on to finishing our image in Photoshop. In Photoshop, I do use the RC Astro plugins Noise Exterminator and Star Exterminator. They are not free. And if you don't have the money to get those, I will be showing you free alternatives. Specifically for star removal, I suggest using StarNet version 2. You can go down to the link in the description below and download that. I'm on Windows, so I'm using the StarNet GUI. If you're on Mac, you'll probably have to use the StarNet command line, which I'm not quite sure how to use. So you might have to look up a separate tutorial for using StarNet on a Mac. All right, I think that's about it for introductions. So let's just go ahead and get everything installed and let's jump into the computer and start processing. All right, let's start by making sure our files are arranged. I've got a folder in here called Orion for YouTube. Double click on that and I have a folder that says lights and a folder that says darks. And it just makes it easy enough. All the pictures that I took of the Orion Nebula are in the lights folder. All the pictures I took with my lens cap are in the dark folder. These subfolders need to be called lights with an S and darks with an S. That's going to come in handy later when we stack in Cyril. But for now, we're going to go ahead and stack in Deep Sky Stacker. I'm going to open picture files and navigate to that lights folder and just select all of our light frames. Hit open. We go to dark files and navigate to our darks folder. Select all of those and hit open. Now we'll just hit check all, register check pictures and go to recommended settings right here. And if you see anything in red, it should give you a recommendation under it. And I would just recommend clicking that. For example, this right here. And I clicked the top recommendation and it turned green. Now at the bottom, I usually recommend using this. If color balance in the resulting images is hard to fix in post-processing, use RGB background calibration. That keeps your image from being green. But a lot of stacking software doesn't do this. For example, PixInsight and Cyril don't natively do this. So we're going to use this one instead, just so the images turn out looking about the same. They are going to have a green tint to them, but I'll show you how to get rid of that. It's totally up to you which one of these you pick. But either way, our workflow will get rid of green regardless. And you would just hit OK and then OK here. Oh, wait, before we hit OK, select the best percentage of pictures to stack. If you went through your light frames and deleted all the bad ones, like for example, I did that earlier. Here's some of my bad light frames. Yeah, look at that. That's just awful. I usually go through my light frames and manually delete a lot of the bad ones. And if I did that, I would leave this at either 100% or 90%. And Deep Sky Stacker will look at the most bloated stars or the worst stars and just kind of pull those out of the stack. If you're confident that all your images are good, go ahead and go with 100%. The way I stack in Cyril will not have this feature, so that's why I like to manually go through there and delete the bad photos. But for now, we're just going to leave this at 100% and hit OK. And we'll just hit OK here again, and it will stack our image for us. I'm going to hit Cancel because I've already stacked my image. When the image is done, you'll see a preview of it in this window. You can come over here to Save Picture to File, and save it in any folder you like with any name you like. Just make sure it's saved as a TIFF file, 16-bit TIFF file. All right, that's how you stack in Deep Sky Stacker. Now let's look at how you do it in Cyril. Before we do our stacking in Cyril, I wanna remind you once again that we have to have our main folder and inside it are subfolders that say lights and darks. And if you have flats and biases, they need to actually say flats with an S and biases with an ES, just like this. Lights, flats, darks, biases. The reason I'm being strict about how the folders need to be plural is that Serial is going to look for these folders with these names and then just automatically stack everything for you. You don't have to do anything. You just point it to the folder and say go. But your folders have to be named just like this. Okay, here we are in Serial. First thing we need to do is tell it 
what our home directory is gonna be in. So we come up here to this home button right here and navigate to that folder where we have our lights and darks, the Orion for YouTube folder. Select that and hit open. That's our home directory. That's where it's gonna work out of. And it's going to look for my folder called darks and my folder called lights. Okay, so how we would normally stack in here, we would go up to the top to scripts and come down to one shot color or OSC pre-processing, click that and it should stack everything. But this script right here is going to look for a folder called lights, a folder called darks, a folder called flats, and a folder called biases. And if you don't have all those folders, it won't work. We need to use the one shot color pre-processing without flats. And this doesn't come natively in serial. You have to install it, but it's pretty easy to do. Just come over here, this right here, click it and click get scripts. It should open this website right here. We just scroll down and here are those scripts. Let's just go ahead and download a script where we can stack. If we have no flats, that would be without flat. Or if we have no darks, without darks. Or if we didn't use flats or darks, that would be this one right here. Just download all of those. Check out some of these scripts as well. You might wanna use some of those in the future. Once you've got your scripts downloaded, just go into your downloads folder, copy all of them. Let's go back into Cyril. Come back up to here again, click this, go to preferences, scripts, and it's gonna tell you the folder where you paste those files into. And for me, it's program files slash serial slash scripts. So I navigate to that folder and paste my scripts in here. Close that, close out of serial, just restart it. Okay, now, once again, we're gonna to go to our home button and make sure that the folder that everything is stored in is selected, Orion for YouTube for me. All right, I'm gonna hit open. Go to scripts and we're going to use the one shot color pre-processing without flats because we didn't take flats i'm just going to click that click run script and just let it do its thing all right serial has finished stacking everything in our orion for youtube folder now i now have this processes folder where it saved all its files that it created while stacking and it has this final image called result it's a fits file so it can only really be viewed in serial or pix insight but that's okay, you can always open it up in Cyril and save it to a TIFF. But we're gonna start our processing in Cyril and then move to Photoshop. Now, whether you stacked in Deep Sky Stacker or Cyril, it doesn't matter. We're just gonna to go to the top and go to Open. And if we stacked in Cyril, we're gonna to go to our result.fit and open that up. If you stacked in Deep Sky Stacker, just navigate to the folder where you saved your finished file and open that one up. I'm just gonna click Open here. And as we can see, our stacked image looks very dark. We can do an auto stretch preview by coming down here to the bottom where it says linear, clicking on that. And these are our different kinds of auto stretches. The one that looks the most normal is just gonna be auto stretch. And this is what I meant earlier by our photos looking very green. If we go down to the histogram auto stretch, that's just intense looking, but that's also a great way to see stacking artifacts in the corners and your vignetting. Now keep in mind, we haven't actually stretched the image. This is just a stretch preview so you can see what's going on. Right now we're going to crop our image. We've got a little bit of stacking artifacts in the corner and we can try to crop out a little bit of this vignetting. You can see our mouse actually looks like a little plus sign. I'm just gonna click over here in a corner, click, hold, and then drag this little box right here until we get the crop we like. Let go, right click, and hit crop. All right, I'm gonna change our auto stretch preview back to just regular auto stretch because this just looks terrible. Now, the next thing we're going to do is remove gradients, light pollution, and vignetting all in one process. Let's go to the top to image processing and come down to background extraction. For the most part, I'm just gonna leave all this alone. I might turn smoothing up just a little bit and definitely turn on add dither because it looks like crap if you don't. And we're gonna click generate. Now you can see it's placed all these red sample points all over the image. It's trying to sample the background. You do not want these sample points on any part of your nebula. And you can get rid of sample points just by right clicking on one. If you double right click, it deletes multiple sample points in that area like this. So I'm just gonna go around and kind of get rid of some sample points that are close to the nebula. And I'm gonna look around and make sure no sample points are on a really bright star. That one's kind of close, let's get rid of that one. All right, and that's really it. We're gonna hit compute background right here. Boom, and let's hit apply. 
All right, as you can see, it removed that green color cast, light pollution, gradients, vignetting. It's all pretty much smoothed out now. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna calibrate the background and the colors. Let's go to image processing, color calibration. We're just gonna use regular color calibration today. First thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take my mouse and just kind of create a square in a dark area. Move it off some of those brighter stars. Just telling it where the background is and click use current selection for background reference and hit background neutralization. All right, kind of neutralized our background a little bit. Now I'm gonna draw a square over the brightest part of the image, which would be the core of the Orion Nebula here. And under white reference, I'm gonna click use current selection and I'm just going to click apply. There we go. Now we got some more natural color in our nebula going on. We wanna close out of this. And our last thing we're gonna do in serial is go back to image processing and remove green noise. It's gonna remove any leftover green in there and just hit apply. There we go. Now we've got some very natural coloring going on. I just need to remind you that we haven't yet stretched our image at all. If we tried to save it right now, it would look like this. I'm gonna click auto stretch and go back to linear. This is what our image still looks like. So we're gonna save it here and open up Photoshop and go to work in there. So I'm gonna to come to this little down arrow right here, click it. Supported image files down here. I'm gonna change that to TIFF and rename it Orion for YouTube. I'm gonna hit save. And I want it to be a 16-bit image because Photoshop does better with 16-bit images and we'll hit save. Now we can close out of Cyril and open up Photoshop. All right, got it opened up in Photoshop. First thing I like to do is click on this little zoom tool and hit fit screen. Just try to fill the screen a little bit more. Now we're gonna duplicate our background. We can do that by right clicking and selecting duplicate layer, or we can just hit control J to duplicate that background. And I'm actually gonna hit it twice. I want two duplicates. I'm gonna double click the first duplicate and name it dark. Double click the second one and name it bright. The reason we're doing this is we want kind of a dark image to where the core is not totally blown out and then a fully bright stretched image. And we're gonna blend the two so we can bring that core back. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the bright image right there and click on the dark one and stretch it just a little bit. We're gonna bring up levels by going to image adjustments levels or hitting control or command L on your keyboard. I'm gonna come right here and I'm gonna take this midpoint slider and slide it over to the left. Not all the way up to the data spike right here on the left, just kind of close. Like I said, we're not trying to blow out that core too much. It's already blown out in the center and we're not gonna get that back, but we don't wanna make it worse. Okay, that looks good enough for me. I'm gonna hit okay. Bring up levels again by hitting control or command L. And I'm gonna take the black point and slide it almost all the way up to the data right there. And there we go, I'm gonna hit okay. Now I need to remove the stars from this image. There's two ways you can do it. I always use Star Exterminator because it's definitely superior and you will see later on in this video why. But if you don't want to pay the money for Star Exterminator, here's another way to do it. We're going to do it in StarNet. And we do this by making sure our dark photo is selected. We're going to go to File, Save as Copy, and we're going to call this Dark for StarNet. Turn layers off and hit Save. On Windows, StarNet should be saved on a folder somewhere on your computer. I keep it on my desktop. I'm just gonna open that folder and go to the StarNet GUI. Double click that to open it. Now for our input file, we're gonna go to Browse and choose the Dark for StarNet file that we just saved and hit Open. Now the next box down here, that's gonna be our output file. And we're gonna change that from Dark for StarNet to Dark Starless. All right, and we just hit Run. Okay, StarNet is finished. I'm gonna close out of it and minimize our StarNet folder. We'll be using that again later. We're gonna to go to File, Open, and now in our work folder, we should have Dark Starless. Let's click that and open it. There it is, and we can copy and paste that back into our workflow by hitting Control or Command A, that's Select All, and Control or Command C to copy. Click back on our main workflow tab right here, and just hit Control V to paste it in here we can double click it and name it Dark Starless. 
Now I prefer using RC Astro Star Exterminator to do the same process. So I'll show you how that works. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the StarNet version of the Starless image. All right, so we're back here. I've got my dark folder selected. I'm just gonna duplicate that by hitting Control, Alt, Shift, and E, or Command, Option, Shift, and E on a Mac. Double click that and naming it Dark Starless. Now I'm just gonna go up to Filter, RC Astro, Star Exterminator, and hit OK. Okay, Star Exterminator has finished, and now regardless of which star removal method you use, you should have a dark layer, a dark starless, and a bright layer on top. So now let's work on the bright layer. I'm gonna click on that and turn it back on. And let's give this a stretch. You can go to Image, Adjustments, Levels, or Control or Command L to bring up levels. Once again, we're gonna take our midpoint slider right here and slide it all the way up to the data spike on the left and hit OK. Gonna bring levels up again, Control or Command L, and we're gonna bring our dark slider almost all the way up to the edge of the data right there. Never wanna go past the data because that's clipping your darks and you won't get a lot of information back. So right about here looks good. I'm gonna hit OK. Now I'm gonna create a new layer, Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Now we're gonna do a curves stretch. You can do that by going to Image, Adjustments, Curves, or Control or Command M on your keyboard. I'm gonna bring my mouse right over the data right here. Click, hold, and drag up. Just keep an eye out on the top. If you hit the ceiling and it flattens out, you are blowing out data in your highlights and you don't get that back either. So let's just bring that down. That's a good enough curve stretch for me. A lot of people like to do S curves where they pull the bottom area down kind of towards the right, but I've never been good at that. So. I'm just gonna leave it like that, hit OK, and bring up levels again, Control or Command L, and bringing my darks in like this. Now we're gonna hit OK. I mean, for some of you, this might be a finished image. I mean, it, it kinda does look pretty cool, but uh, there's a lot more I wanna do to it. So at this point, I wanna remove the stars from my bright image. Once again, I'll show you how to do it in StarNet first. We're just gonna save this, a file, save a copy. I'm gonna call this bright for StarNet. Turn layers off and hit save. Go back to our StarNet folder, open up the StarNet GUI, go to browse and look for bright for StarNet. There it is. Hit open and change our output file name to bright starless. And hit run. Okay, StarNet is finished. I'm gonna close that out and close out of my StarNet folder. Go to File, Open, and find my bright starless image and open that. There we go, didn't look too bad. I'm going to hit Control or Command A to select all and Control or Command C to copy. Come back into our main workflow tab and paste it in. I'm gonna hit Control V. Let's double click that and call it Starless StarNet. I'm gonna turn that off for now, go back to the layer below it, and we're gonna use Star Exterminator to make this a starless image. So I need to duplicate this layer. I'm gonna hit Control, Alt, Shift, and E, and go to Filter, RC Astro, Star Exterminator, and hit OK to run that. Okay, Star Exterminator is finished. I'm gonna double click that new starless image, entitle it Starless Star X. Now I just want to quickly compare the two, Star Exterminator versus StarNet. We're going to start by clicking on the StarNet one up here, turning it on, and let's give it a quick curve stretch. Control or Command M, and let's just bump this up a good bit. Hit OK. And let's do the same thing. Let's turn StarNet off and go to Star Exterminator. Hit Control M, bump that curve stretch up a good bit, and hit Okay. All right, let's go back to StarNet. This is the free one, okay? I want you to look in the background and notice all these little red splotches. They're all in the background of the Orion Nebula. They're all in the background of the Running Man Nebula. They're just all over the place. And you can hide these a little bit by darkening in the background, but they are there. Let's turn StarNet off and look at what Star Exterminator did. Look at that background and how clean it is there are no red splotchy artifacts at all. This just looks incredible. 
Let's go back to the Starnet one again. If you want to get rid of some of the really bad artifacts, you can come over here to this Band-Aid looking tool. Let's right click it and make sure it's on Healing Brush. Basically, you hover your mouse over a dark area. You can control the brush size with your bracket keys. You hover it over a dark area, an Alt or Option click in the dark area, then you click over the red splotch, and that should get rid of it. You just kind of go around your image, cleaning it up like this. Spend as much time as you want on this and try to get it as neat as possible. Also, if you're curious of how I'm zooming in and out, I usually keep the zoom tool selected a lot. And if you left click and move left and right, that's kind of how you zoom. And you can hit fit screen to go back to normal, zoom back in. But anyway, click back on a healing brush tool and just try to heal as much as this is possible. Okay, when you've cleaned it up as much as you can, you can bring up levels by hitting Control or Command L and bringing the darks right up to the data spike, darkening, darkening it a bit. And that should get rid of a lot of that too. And I think that looks pretty okay. We'd hit okay. But I think I'm gonna go with the starless image that Star Exterminator created just because of how much neater and cleaner it looks. So I'm gonna delete this Starnet version. And I'm also gonna delete this Star Exterminator version too, cause I kind of over, way overstretched it. I'm just gonna throw that away and just create a new Star Exterminator starless image. All right, now we've got our starless image, and if we turn that off, the image below, it should be the same thing, but with the stars. We need to turn this into a stars only image so we can recombine our stars later. Let's click on that layer with the stars and duplicate it. Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Double click it and call it stars only. Now with that layer selected, I'm gonna go to image, apply image, and here, where it says layers, we're gonna drop that box down and select our starless image. Mine is starless star X. Go to blending and select subtract and leave our offset at one and hit okay. Now we have our stars only image. I'm gonna doctor this a little bit, get rid of some of that ugly red that the cheap lens has caused by going to filter, camera raw filter. We're gonna to go to the optics tab and open up Defringe, it's this one right here. Turn this purple slider amount up and kind of move this more into the red and we can see a lot of that red going away. All I did was move the purple slider up and move this more into the red right here. Got rid of a lot of that red color fringing and I'm going to hit okay. Now I'm gonna shrink some of these stars just a little bit by going to select, color range. And in this drop down box, I'm gonna come down to highlights turn fuzziness up and range down a bit to where we can see a lot of stars are selected down there. And I'm gonna hit okay. Now we can see our stars are selected. Let's refine our selection just a little bit by going to select, modify, expand, and expand that by two pixels. Select, modify, feather, and we'll feather it by one pixel and we're gonna hit okay. Now to shrink the stars that we've got selected, I'm gonna to go to filter, other, minimum. Make sure preserve is set to roundness instead of squareness for obvious reasons. And I'm not gonna go any more than 0.8 pixels here. You could really reduce the stars, but it wouldn't look natural. So about 0.8 is all I'm gonna go. I'm gonna hit okay. All right, let's turn the selection off so we can actually see our stars by going to select and deselect. There we go, we've got our shrunken stars. We can move on to our actual nebula now. Click back on our starless image and turn it back on. I'm gonna duplicate it by hitting Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Bring up levels, Control, L, and just bring in that dark just a little bit. There we go, I'm gonna hit OK. Let's bring up curves again by hitting Control or Command M. I'm just gonna do a, a small curve stretch. Not too much, because we're getting a little blown out here. There we go, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hit okay, bring up levels to darken the background again, control or command L, slide that in. Okay, there we go, I'm gonna hit okay. Now, I need to bring back this core that's getting severely blown out. So let's come down to our layers and go down to the bottom and look for dark starless. Click that and let's drag it up to the top. 
I want to put dark starless right below our top bright starless layer. So I should have the bright starless layer on top. I can turn that off. And I should have the dark starless right below it. Let's click on the very top layer and click this button right here to create a layer mask. It should be white. Let's come over here to the left and make sure this is set to black. We can change it by hitting that right there. Let's set that to black. Make sure zoom is selected. Let's zoom in here just a little bit and let's select our brush tool right here. Go to the top and make sure opacity is at 8%. We can change our brush size with our bracket keys or right here. Now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click around in the core and kind of bring back some of the detail in there. You don't want to go too crazy and make the core too dark. It won't look natural. But for now, I think that looks good to me. I'm going to create a new layer by hitting Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Now, if this is too many layers and it's starting to bog down your computer, then we can go ahead and flatten this image. But before we flatten it, we have to absolutely make sure that we save our stars only image. We don't want that going anywhere. So let's turn everything off except for stars only. Select that and let's just go ahead and save that. File, save a copy, call it stars only. Turn layers off and hit save. All right, so you don't have to do this if you've got a computer with a lot of RAM, but if you don't and your computer's starting to get slow, let's go up to layer and come down to flatten image. There we go. Now we're back to just one layer again. Let's duplicate it by hitting Control J. Now the next thing we're gonna do is just select the nebula and work on the vibrance of it, bring out those colors. So I'm gonna to go to Select, Color Range, and make sure Highlights is selected. Let's turn that range back over here a little bit. Just gonna mess around with it until just the nebula is selected, not much of the background, and hit OK. Now we'll go up to the top to Select again and Select and Mask. In our view mode, make sure you're set to black and white. We'll come down here to contrast and bring that up so none of that background is selected. Just like that. And turn feather up to where it's very blurry. There we go, it looks good. I'm gonna hit okay and come down here to add new layer mask right here. Click that and that should turn our selection into a mask. See it right there. But we're gonna go back and click on our actual image. Now when we apply brightness, it's only going to apply to the nebula and not our background. I've had a lot of problems with me increasing vibrance and my background actually looks like bluish and that did not look good. So that's why we're doing this. We're going to go up to the top to image adjustments vibrance. I'm going to turn vibrance up a touch and saturation up a touch and we can really see the blues and the pinks coming out. I'm going to hit OK and do that maybe one more time, but not quite as aggressive image adjustments, vibrance. Turn that up just a touch and that up just a touch. There we go. Loving these colors. I'm going to hit OK. And the last thing I want to do maybe is go to filter, camera raw filter. Let's go to our basic tab and turn up clarity just a touch. I'll go ahead and zoom in, left clicking and moving left and right to zoom in and out. Turn up clarity just a touch. That just brings out so much more detail. It looks amazing. If we're really brave, we can bring the exposure up just a touch. Just a touch. I'm going to hit OK. I'm liking that a lot. All right, let's create a new layer. Control, Alt, Shift, and E. We are almost done. Last thing I really want to do is a little bit of noise reduction. Um, I usually use RC Astro's Noise Exterminator. But if you don't have that, we can go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. Let's zoom in again and come down to Detail and increase Color Noise Reduction and Noise Reduction. But just remember, the higher you increase your noise reduction, the more soft your image is going to look. It's going to get rid of a lot of the fine detail. That won't be too noticeable when you're zoomed out, but it does look noticeable when you're zoomed in. 
That's how you would do noise reduction just with Photoshop by itself. All right, I'm gonna click out of this because I'm gonna use Noise Exterminator. I use Noise Exterminator by going up to Filter, RC Astro, Noise Exterminator, Denoise, 75% and Detail. I'll just leave that at default always and hit OK. Okay, I'm gonna click on my zoom tool and zoom in and we can see it has removed so much of that noise but also kept the detail. All right, we're about done with this image and it's time to bring the stars back. I'm gonna create a new layer, control alt shift and E, command option shift and E on a Mac. And since I flattened everything, I'm gonna have to open up the starless image I saved. If you didn't flatten everything, you could just find your stars only image down here in your layers and drag it up to the very top. But since I flattened, we're gonna to go to file, open, find my stars only image and open that. And there it is. I'm gonna hit control A to select all and control C to copy. Come back over to my workflow tab over here and hit control V to paste it in. All right, it should be right there on top. And I'll just change this blending mode right here from normal to screen. Now I've got my stars back and we've got pretty much a completed image. If where it says screen is still highlighted in blue, just hit escape so that goes away. Now we can create one more layer, control alt shift and E, and I might open up my levels, control L and bring that in just a touch more. And that's, that's pretty much it. If you wanted to crop some more, you can click your crop tool. Actually, let's uh, fit screen here. Yeah, we wanted to crop some more. We can click our crop tool, crop it in even more. Hit enter. Get the zoom tool and fit screen. And that is a nice looking image. Actually, I do like the rotation being the other way. I'm gonna hit image, image rotation, and rotate it 180 degrees. That's the angle that I like seeing the Orion Nebula at. So there we go, when we're done, we just hit file, save a copy, and save it as a JPEG or a TIFF or whatever you wanna save it as. And congratulations, you made it to the end. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. I know that was a hell of a processing tutorial, lengthwise anyway. I don't know how much you got out of it, but I hope you got plenty out of it. If you did, let me know in the comments below and let me know what you're looking forward to in the future. I won't always be doing really complex processing tutorials like this. A Milky Way season's coming up and we're probably gonna be doing some simple Lightroom tutorials. So that's something we can look forward to. And I'm just looking forward to Milky Way season in general. It's kind of starting now at around three or four o'clock in the morning. Can't wait to get out there. Can't wait to see you guys next time. So uh, if you like the video, leave me a like, uh, subscribe. And as always, everybody stay spacey, clear skies and watch out for snakes. Good night.